You are listening to the We Hired a Sitter for this podcast. We hired a sitter for this. We have a roster of like seven sitters. I hate authority, but I'm a mom. I'm an old man. I need orthopedic shoes. The laughs, the chuckles, the TMI. Some people might say, why would you have kids? The oceans are rising. The economy's collapsing. And they're not wrong. I'm Ross. And I'm Patrick. And we hired a sitter. Okay, everybody, we're back with another episode of We Hired a Sinner for This, and it's a Ross episode. Wow, you didn't think another one was coming, but here she is. I can't believe it. I missed you. Come come a little closer. I just want you in the in the video fully. Oh look, it's a couple of couple of old people. Like, like an old an old couple on the bus. A couple of old bags. Yeah, we just saw ourselves. We walked past the uh the veterinarian. The nearby veterinarian office. Is it a veterinarian? Yeah. I veteran i want to say veteran yeah we went veterinarian the dog doctor Mm -hmm. and there was an old couple sitting inside and they looked just like us in 30 years 30 20 15 15 (laughs) but he he was very gray very spry very thin very fit and i said i would like to be in that man's shape but uh he's he's old they looked like a couple of bag of bones and she had like a bright red dye job on her hair but was that a dye job Oh yeah, but it was like a similar cut. Yeah, and she was kind of like, you know, skinny, but like tits flopped. Yeah, talking to the Ooh, mic. Sorry. What are you doing? You know, you're on a podcast. I forgot. You haven't podcasted in weeks and weeks and weeks. I haven't. The well, last time I was on here with you was February, I think. Oh my gosh! And then I did do, um, Lady Journey. Oh yeah. You after did. that. Yeah. But it's been. I was wearing clothes that were for the cold. Oh the yeah, last yeah. Time and I we was... were talking about the Super Bowl, so yeah, that was February. <laughs> what big football fan? <laughs> it this always is, comes this, up. This is it a... always comes you up. You can't stop us. You get us together, and we're talking hikes and touchdowns. Yep, hikes. And t- I was like, wait, hikes? Like on <laughs> Pr- a mountain? Price hikes. Uh, welcome to hikes and touchdowns <laughs> with Patrick Holbert and Ross Aaron Martino, a football podcast <gasps> that... by people who haven't watched football in years. And I actively like refuse to learn anything about the game and that would bring you and your father so close but you refuse to open that door of emotional intimacy well, he why ref- is it he refuses a lot of other doors let's be honest um although he did say i talked to him on the phone yesterday and he said he was gonna find a place to go watch his wnba game oh he does love women's sports he does love women's sports which i you know is feminist in nature but he likes to tell you that he likes to watch girls playing what, yeah what is the deal it's he likes the the actual athleticism or he likes women in athlete athleisure clothes he tries to act like with women's golf in particular that he just thinks those women are hot and he loves golf yeah but i doubt he's that attracted to the basketball players. he likes an alpha woman well we know that is, is based on my mother is your mother an alpha jojo what do you I think? I mean, she's a big, she's a, she's a big lady, tall <laughs> lady. She's physically imposing. She is. She's a beautiful woman. I mean, she, she your is. mother is a BBW, <laughs> a big, beautiful woman. Well, as we've said before, she's like the definition of big boned. Yeah. Like she's not like that large in size, although she would tell you differently she's because my height. she's dysmorphic. But We're like the same height, right? No, she's six feet. I'm, I'm shrinking. Okay, fine. Then you're the same height. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she just she has a presence. Yeah. You know, she she knows how to take up some space. Yes. You know. So yes, your dad has always liked feeling small around women, and if he goes to a in, to a sporting event, uh oh, where women are very skilled, he probably feels some kind of comfort. Sure, <laughs> but before that gets out of hand, the point being, WNBA is where we can meet. Yeah, yeah, We can yeah. meet on the court. Are we going to that game? I think maybe. Yeah, we're gonna go see Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Yes. Your dad was aghast. Yeah, couldn't when I that. said, "Who's Caitlin Clark?" I was kind of do actually. I don't look at anything anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm not looking at social media. I'm not looking at anything. Okay. I'm staying off the phone. Well, that's not true though, because you are on, but it's like only as it pertains to like your comedic work. Yeah, or I just am just posting scrolling 
Reddit. Reddit. You uh, love a Reddit. Oh, yeah, because oh, you love a Reddit. Because you know what I, you know, I figured out why I'm on it so much lately hmm. is that Franny, if she sees me on it, she's not interested. Oh. If I'm on Instagram, she's like, "Who's that? What's that? Show me, show me, show me." But if she just sees blocks of text, she won't take my phone. But I'm also on there because I'm on the sugar-free uh, subreddit. Oh. Count, I'm counting days with support. strangers on the internet about being on day 19. That's cute. No, I didn't know no, that. No junk food. I did have a muffin just now, but I think a muffin, it's not the same as a it's sleeve more, of donuts. It's, <laughs> and it's more about what is a trigger for you. Yeah, what are my bottom lines? Yes. Is that how people talk about it? Well, bottom lines are things in OA, like overeaters oh. and se- S-, S program, sex programs. Mm. You got to define what is your, like, what is a relapse? Mm. Like, if you're a sex addict, if you have sex with your wife twice a week, maybe that's a healthy sex life. But if you start going to the sex worker secretly, sex work is fine. Sex but if you work go, is work. If you go secretly, it's the or, secrets. Or if you're you're whacking off at work in between shifts and whatever, mm-hmm. that could be outside the the boundary of what what is a, a healthy sex life, and that could be a relapse. Sure. So for me, sex with a sex worker is a uh, uh, Drake's cake. <laughs> in the in the in the sugar free. <laughs> it's too hot in here. It's not as hot as I thought it was going to be. Well, I had that AC pump, and we got to pay for this AC. I, the lady emailed. She said, do you have your air conditioner on? Can you let me know? And I was like, maybe I won't tell them. <sighs> secrets. We're only as sick as our secrets, and, it's only, and that's across the board. Yeah, and it's only like 25 bucks that's a That's across the board. I'll email. I'll tell them today. I turned it on a week ago. Please charge me for June. It is so tempting to lie, isn't it? Yes. Lying is It's so is easy. Tempting. And it just makes everything easier. I don't got to know everything. Until it doesn't. Yeah. Until it doesn't. And then you're like, what story did I tell that person? Yeah. What was, did I say? What web of lies am I living in this week? <laughs> I came clean to you earlier. Yeah. You told a lie this week. I did. Yeah. What was it? Do, was... You, do you want to share about it? Well... Do we want to let the viewers and the people know? I mean, you're. I don't mind. I just feel like you're the real loser here, who is telling <laughs> your husband lies. So, well, it's up to you. Well, I mean, we might as well be current. Yeah, let's right? get current. Might as well be current. I mean, we people have been sitting through twenty episodes of Gastor and I. <laughs> well, reading they want a, the juice. They right? want the fucking Holbertino juice. Okay. What's the juice? What's the tea? What's the? Um, I'm dating somebody. Other. You than didn't you. tell me that. Other than. <laughs> other than you. Mm-hmm. And it's new. And sometimes there is love making involved. Wow. Probably every time. <laughs> Perhaps I don't know if we call it that, but. You can if you'd like. Oh yeah, you're like talking. You're you're like, let's do a little horizontal therapy. Yeah, that's what I say. Um, and I wanted to have a conversation with this person on the phone, but I would have to excuse myself from you and Fran to do mm-hmm. so. Middle of the day on a Saturday. Felt when like- everything's everything's happening. We had just gotten home. I'm just laying on a little extra guilt trip. It's all there. All the guilt is present. Okay. Uh, so instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to go outside and talk to this person, I said, hey, I'm going to go outside to talk to you. I, I don't know if I can even say the S word. Is that breaking in an uh, You could say uh, you were talking to your sobriety accountability partner. Okay. So I lied and said I was talking to that person. Yeah. 12 step related because mm-hmm. I knew if I say that, no questions asked. You're like, my husband's a big book thumper. He'll yeah, he'll no just love it asked. if I'm doing my if program. I'm doing service, but instead I was doing a different kind of service. And what so, was the nature of the call? Was it to oh, hash had, out to hash hashing out some rough patches? Like, was it a sensual talk? No. Like a fun? It wasn't a fun talk. It was like no. we need to figure out our communication. Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I have been in some intense relations situationships <laughs> since we started this part of our life which and, we're coming uh, up on seven years no it's uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Right now, I guess is seven, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. We um, have not been monogamous, and yeah. we're still. Guess what? Not getting divorced. Love my husband more than ever. Yeah. Suck it. Yeah. No, literally. <laughs> If you're nasty. <laughs> Suck it if you're nasty. Suck it if you're nasty. I mean, I might be retired from that life. I might be done. I might just be but exhausted. But is that okay? I don't know. Well, that's a different topic. But <laughs> let's finish this I'm one. Not. What the hell was I saying? You've been in. You've had to have some serious talks. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I've had. Yeah. I've had some relationships that have had moments where you do have to give that other person your undivided attention or give them like communicate like f- come to an agreement or like renegotiate an original agreement yes. or you you basically have to deal with problems as they come up and um i think it would have been easier for or I, I, yeah i guess i would have appreciated if you said hey this new person i'm dating we have a little problem right now and i need to like talk to them for like 30 minutes i'm gonna go outside i'm so sorry to desert you and our daughter wow. and our dog and leave you guys waiting in the dust but uh <laughs> i've got to deal with this problem um no so I, i'm i don't know i appreciate you telling me today thank you well thanks for being so understanding yeah i mean so yeah i guess i'll i'll just share with anybody interested what where i'm at i i was seeing somebody for a few months this year and uh, I really liked them, but I think I st- started to feel overwhelmed with schedule and time constraints and my work. And uh, I am releasing this special later this summer and shooting that in April felt like a big turning point in my career. And it felt like I finally have this thing to focus on that I'm so excited about. And unfortunately, it, it kind of revealed to me what... Um, extraneous stuff in my life uh, wouldn't just wouldn't be able to get the attention they deserve and i I broke off this relationship that that is what it is it's like the attention they deserve yeah that we're not capable of sometimes yeah and she was such an awesome person and like a, a really we we connected in a lot of levels and it was really nice but um yeah, I, I broke that off, and I, um, I, I just don't think I'm interested in the extracurriculars at the moment. Um, yeah. I feel really connected to my work, and I'm excited to share this thing with and to your people. wife and your daughter. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, Not just no. the work. No, I. Yeah, and like, well, it's it's it's, I don't know. It's just made me feel really in my own life which Mm. includes my family Mm -hmm. and like i don't know i guess i uh for seven years was like really enjoying the adventure of like uh exploring outward Mm -hmm. and having experiences that were really cool and stuff but like yeah i guess i'm just not interested in all that at the moment but you're okay with your your wife still being interested. Yeah, and I think you need it. I think wow. you know, the stress you of hear this? <laughs> I think the stress of parenting and motherhood uh kind of must be really hard. <laughs> from what I from what I gather and what I've witnessed. What you're watching it sounds, firsthand accounts. Yeah, it seems pretty terrible, so <laughs> If you're able to escape uh, once a week or a couple times here and there uh, and go enjoy yourself, I think you should. Thanks, hon. Yeah. You're the best. As long as you come back. Always. And, and uh, yeah. Always. I always come And back. as long as you're being taken care of and you're not uh, being well. disrespected or neglected or right. abused <laughs> in any kind of way. That's definitely not happening. But it is, it's like, yeah, it's, how complicated are you willing to go? Yeah. Is that the saying? Yeah. (laughs) That's, that's chapter one of the ethical slut. How complicated are you willing to go? How complicated are you willing (laughs) to go? And that, you know, I think before you enter into something new, it's like, 
oh, this is going to be easy. It's fun. It's extraneous to like all of my responsibilities. But then it's like, of course, you're still dealing with another person and you have to respect that other person and the complexities that come along with that. Yeah. And that does require some checking in, some long conversations, some like reassessment. And like that is the part where ethical non-monogamy is like you are in another relationship with somebody and you need to like respect that and them as such. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're like a married person that's like, I'm trying to get my kicks, like you can really like spin a story of just like, I'm out here being a slut. But like, yeah. it's never going to be. Yeah, there's like a that. there's a cost. There's a uh, and there's yes. there's la- emotional labor is a term for a reason. It's work to like really care for someone else and their yes. feelings and their hort. <laughs> they got a hort. Well, and it's my amazing therapist who is very encouraging of the choices we make and also knows that you and I have a very strong foundation that we continue to work on and check in about if things do feel a little Mm -hmm. um she know she always chalks it up to me loving experiences yeah and I do. You, you love like I yeah, love you, experiences. I mean, even as a kid, you would go I, to uh, Charlie's uh, Checker House. What is that place? <laughs> Where I worked? No, no, no. Uh, I'm making a trying Charlie's, to make a Charlie's eating and drinking. You're trying to make a lame joke. What? Is, yeah. What is the one with the robotic animals uh, that kids go Chuck to? Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Even as a kid, you <laughs> love Chuck E. Cheese. The experience of Chuck E. Cheese. Like, wow, those animals well, are you really. You know what is interesting though? I have been thinking about how like. Even when I was a kid, I was like, which I don't know, maybe all kids are like this. I'm not sure. But I was so curious about like sex and relationships Mm. and like drawn to like movies and TV that had like those sorts of storylines or things that felt explicit. Like I definitely have always been curious and wanted to know more about sex and love and relationships Mm -hmm. and you know having crushes on celebrities as a kid that felt painful like they felt real oh who's the early one jtt jonathan no i was really too old for that mark paul gossler oh zach yeah saved by the bell yeah he was plastered all over my walls oh my god also Corey, you wanted him plastered all over you oh like seven years you wanted him to ring your bell also, Corey Haim, that's really dating. Oh, me yeah, he was because cute. I was I was very young. He, he was the hottest of the Corys. Any, anymore yeah, either. he was I, when they were in their prime. He was the cutest of the Corys because he was in like, Corey Feldman was like hot. But like Corey he, Haim no. had like that softness to him, which maybe that is a testament to my queerness as well, because he did have like Fem feminine energy. soft yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, he was also a nine-year-old boy Correct. that you were and I was younger, pining for. And I was younger than that. Yeah, so but it was I age had, appropriate. I had a huge poster, just like a glossy photo of him, huge poster of him yeah. behind my bed yeah. when I was, I don't know, five or six, seven, yeah. something like that. So I like... I don't know what that is. Like, did you ever have like painful crushes on Yeah, mine, mine was Jessica Rabbit. Come on. A fake cartoon lady. But did it feel real to you? No, no. Uh I did I I got into the love addiction stuff of like obsessing I'm not about individuals. I'm calling it that. By I'm, the way, I'm not trying to pathologize myself. No, well, I'm saying with the obsessing and like magical thinking about mm, a person. Magical. That was like that was like high school of like mm. if I just think about this girl enough like at night when I'm trying to get go to sleep, like if I think about her enough, I can communicate some kind of subconscious mm, energy and she'll be. just be attracted to me and she'll become my girlfriend. Ugh. And I can remember two two girls I did that with. Uh, and it worked. No, it did not work. <laughs> Neither one. Neither one ever gave me a second look. So that started for me like in elementary school. That, yeah, that yeah. feeling, yeah. you know? I think, yeah, I think for me at, at, at a young age, it was like, yeah, definitely like the, you know, I've talked about this plenty before, but like seeing pornography too young or mm. like 
like sexual images or like women in lingerie and catalogs like seeing these things at a young age were so so like overwhelmingly titillating yeah that it was more about the the sexuality sure. of it all sure. than like personalities or like oh she seems like she would be a great wife or whatever it was just more <laughs> like it's just more like i want to see more of that whatever yeah. that is whatever they're revealing whatever else is going to come next on the next page of this magazine like i can't wait to see more of that kind of stuff i felt that too yeah and i definitely it was never like I want to marry that person. It was just like, I need that person to see me <laughs> and know that they're going to fall madly in love with me. <laughs> Is that love addiction? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we can both end up in Mr. Belding's office at the right Oof. time. Or, or the peach never pit. Did it for me. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Never, you, never. you wanted somebody to get your peach pit. I'm just going with the, the, the... Peach Pit was 90210, I think. No, that was Saved by the Bell. That was the lunchroom. The Peach Pit. I don't know. The neon, all the neon. I think, I think it said the Peach Pit. I think the Peach Pit was 90210. I can look it up. Look it up. All right. You talk, look it about, up. talk about something else while I do this. Um, well, something else I've been thinking about, too, was uh, when I was around Fran's age, I started getting caught dry humping things oh yeah oh is that gonna start for us that's what i'm wondering and i'm also wondering like is it because she has very little privacy that nothing like that is transpired first of all (laughs) you look up peach pit on google oh it's a stupid band it's a band yeah 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 remember them no you're thinking of passion passion Pit. pit yeah peach pit they're not good these people can't be good do they just do peach pit 90210 yeah i'll do peach pit saved by the bell (laughs) Um, oh, people are freaking out right now that know all the people tuning in and watching. I will say. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Peach Pit is a retro style restaurant in Beverly Hills, 90210. Thank you. But what is, what's the one from. I can't think of what it's called on. Um, Saved by the Bell lunchroom. Yeah. What is the cafe? It's like 50. Somebody else Googled Saved by the Bell Peach Pit. So. What's Saved by the Bell? Nope. Um, what is it the max oh the max yeah yep. oh well <laughs> mark paul i'm ready for you he's actually aged very well too yeah yeah he not. was on what was that show we just oh he was still, on barry still, oh yeah he's a working actor yeah way to go mario is just doing like far Ugh. right commentary oh uh, is he yeah i think he's a, like a outspoken republican gun gun oh, nut he would be yeah and then he's like extra yeah yeah <laughs> oh wait maybe am i thinking of somebody That's what else saying. i don't know if he's doing that he's just doing entertainment television oh, yeah anyway uh franny our child mm-hmm. has begun talking about being in love with people or boyfriend girlfriend she stuff. has she has talked about boyfriend girlfriend really yeah only a couple times and i haven't like, and i missed it i haven't been investigating it because i don't want to like you know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I just <laughs> not interested. No, kid. no. Cork it. Well, I don't want to encourage it. It's just like at this age, we don't need to get into all that. Okay. I mean, she it's knows. An, she knows. It's an interesting approach. She knows you and I are boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. I think we're role modeling. Oh good, yeah. Loving relationship. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the fact that like any time we hug. Which is a lot because we're in love. She, she comes a running. She runs she over. She wants like she family wants huggy. Family huggy, hug attack. Yeah, it is very cute. Yeah, I know. I do think we're really good models because we don't really fight, and we do show each other a fair amount of affection around the house. Yeah, we just quietly seethe and we teach her to bottle it up. No, I'm kidding. Although when uh, I do, when either of us do get like passionate about something, which I think is funny, like that is not a fight. It's just like me getting fired up about something and sharing it with you. She goes, you have to be nice to Dada. Yeah. Or like, you don't even know. This is me being nice. Yeah. I'm just having a conversation. Or you will, if you have a loud guffaw, mm. she goes, Mama, you scared me. Yeah. I'm like, get used to it. Yeah. I'm kid. like, there are sudden outbursts with this one. Ah! <laughs> um 
I was thinking about a conversation I had yesterday with another sober dad. I was sharing with him about her like petulance lately. Hmm? She's been being a little petulant, wouldn't sure. you say? Petulant being like... Uh, like rude yes. and like mean and i didn't uh, i kind having, of figured out what that word meant but it's been a while having outbursts Petulant child i yeah. guess is like an old school phrase she's uh, i may be using it wrong but like just like a lot of outbursts a lot of attitude so much attitude some throwing stuff some refusing refusing certain Threats. foods r- refu- yeah I'm if not you g- do this i'm doing this if you do this i'm not gonna love you anymore yeah or i won't be your f- best friend i'm gonna break this if you do this oh yeah if you do this i'm gonna throw this piece of art away that i yeah. made last week that you loved uh i just it's so badly that's what i wish like more adult things would land because i just want to be like <laughs> whatever yeah yeah <laughs> like and just like let her know like i'm not engaging yeah. with your nonsense like yeah. i'm not mad at you i'm just like ugh. yeah like over exaggerated <laughs> eye roll you're like yeah. i honestly wish i could just go you're so annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's the word i, I shared that's a- like all i want to say is you're so annoying right <laughs> yeah I, I shared about her and used annoying yeah. as the word so uh, this morning so annoying um Anyway, I was talking about, to a guy about all these things, like the refusing to brush teeth and the refusing to wear any of the clothes we have for her just feel ins- like really crazy making. And it's like it's at a it feels right now. intentional, like she knows it upsets us. So she's like, yes. let me turn the screws on these people. Let me see how far I can push them, because eventually I'll work for the CIA at Abu Ghraib. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to practice my skills for a rendition now. With I these literally people. thought yesterday while I was cleaning up the house, I thought about, and I won't do this, but I definitely thought about just hiding all of her clothes except for the dresses. Yeah, and just being like, "Sorry, bitch." That's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to choose. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> all you've got is dresses. <laughs> I really, I sat there and I looked at his at her little fucking Montessori closet that I built for her and I was just like I'm gonna fucking take all these clothes out and only leave the dresses I, I really think if she came home and saw that she would just like cry and have a breakdown I wonder what that, that would do that is what she would probably do and then she'd fucking move on and she'd be forced to wear the goddamn dresses yeah. which it's like why do I care so much because she has 20 dresses that she's not fucking wearing yeah. that are so much cuter than the same bullshit <laughs> skirt and t-shirt she keeps wearing every day two skirts neither ah! of them neither of them are attractive neither of them are attractive one's too small one's not seasonally appropriate <laughs> and honey, then the other's like a dress up skirt you're and- like honey you can't wear corduroy in june uh, with like a fucking worn in beat up stained t-shirt with socks and sneakers oh god um, i can't take it Anyway, I was telling this guy Sorry. about this. No, no, I appreciate it. It's good. We want everybody to have the full we context. Riff. We want a riff. We want to have the full context of the monster we're dealing with at home. Yeah. Uh, today, people were talking about roommate troubles, You're and like, I, <laughs> I said I've I have a housemate who annoys me, oh, but man, I have that to must have lit the room. Uh, forgive her because she's only four, and yeah, I got a little laugh. I got a little laugh on that one. Yeah. Working uh, out boots. Oh, uh, no, God. Never no. go to a meeting and work no. out bits. No. Never, never, never. No, don't do it. Don't. Bring it in. All right, so you made a joke about her being your roommate. Well, and... no, so I was talking about this guy. The guy, And this guy is a mental health professional. He's a therapist. He's a couples therapist. This guy's great. He's got two children, 12 and 16. Ugh. And um, he made this great point. He said, you know, like, uh, that actually, like, because he was saying earlier in the meeting he said i grew up with i've never heard my parents apologize to me for anything and i apologize to my own kids like at least once a day Mm -hmm. because we we fight a lot there's a lot of shouting that's how we communicate uh there's a lot of rupture repair work i'm doing with my kids all the time so i'm always telling them i'm sorry i yelled but i was frustrated or whatever and he was like in the context of our generation we didn't grow up with parents who apologize like that and um And then I was telling him about Franny after the meeting and he was saying, you know, that means she probably feels safe with you guys. That's always the fucking. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I'm glad you feel safe, but could you not treat me like a doormat? I 
Um, I honestly would like you to feel a little less safe. Yeah, quite well, honestly. that's that's interesting because it's like with us, she can push the limits and find where yes. the edge is, and the edge is quite further than it was for us and our parents, or me yes. and my parents at yes. least. Much so, further. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, oh, he said. You know, one time I had to tell my kid, like, yeah, you can talk to me like that or you can do whatever with me. But like out in the world, if you do or say that behave that way, somebody could hit you for that mm. or there will be repercussions like it, 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 fine. If you want to disrespect me here, this is a safe space, but the world is not. And I yeah. thought that was interesting, mm, yeah. which led me to sharing with him how we are using uh, telling her basically using uh, social pressure against her like with the tooth brushing which that's more your move than mine but it, it's it's it we <laughs> it's are true he the professional backed me up he was like so basically what i've said to her is like you can find if you don't want to brush your teeth you can go to school with a smelly mouth people might notice so i think it's gross and think it's yucky so maybe you should brush your teeth and he said well we are social animals and this is the age for them to learn how the world yeah. works yeah so Oof, hard lessons at this age. <laughs> yeah. man so well same with farting too oh yeah because she's so into farting right now Oh yeah and i do feel like i have been kind of using that that line of thinking with her about farting where i'm like you can fart, but yeah. you do this out in front of other people that are not your mom and your dad, you're going to be the gross kid that farts. Yeah, they'll make fun of you. And we all remember that kid. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. Have I told... I don't know if I've ever talked about this when I was... I told you this story the other night and probably multiple times during our marriage. You start <laughs> to repeat yourself, folks. It's a never-ending loop. It's like a jukebox. And then you start making jokes about the loops that you make. Yeah. We got a few of those. We got a jukebox with a couple buttons that are worn in <laughs> on the repeat stories. I mean, that's what that's what uh, 13, like 13 years together. 13 years coming up on. The, we're in between 13, 14. Right the now. days are long and the years are short in a marriage wow. or child rearing. Wow. You're in a. <laughs> you're, in a, <laughs> you're in a looping looping hellscape of repeated <laughs> memories and, and you know what? lost if moments in time and if you can't laugh, is you, you laugh. you gotta if learn you, can't laugh. Laugh. you gotta learn to who laugh. is this <laughs> it's you know who that is that's somebody's drunken great aunt giving a mm. toast at the wedding she like traveled from another state. She doesn't even know the kids who are getting married, but you she's know, I've like, I've never been on a plane before. <laughs> I kinda, you know, I, I'm so happy that Michael and uh, what, what was your name and Brittany are getting married today. And I've had such good wine, and I thought I would say a few words. It's yep. that lady. It's that lady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's, that it's lady. Helen from Kiff. Oh. Should Wait. we should we give children's TV yes, recommendations at the end we of this will. show? We will. But let's circle back to us being together for 13 years. Oh, and repeating and stories. And oh, stories. yes. I, this story, I, I was a farter. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. But I was, Also, boys, socially acceptable to fart more than girls. Yeah, that's true. We Jerking off and farting. You're not losing... Sometimes I do both. ...social cachet. No. Think about if a girl was farting and masturbating in school. Well, that is a very specific fetish. That, uh, <laughs> I don't mean at the same time. It could be. All right, go uh, on. Seventh grade. There you are. Seventh were. grade, home economics class. Mrs. Lazaroff. I'm sitting Poor next thing. to Will Balaz, and I cooked up a big fatty. I got a belly full of gas, and I'm Disgusting. like, I'm going to unleash an SBD on Will Balaz. Which Balaz did I say it was? Will. Will. I think it was Frank Balaz. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to unleash this cloud of death on my buddy here. And I say to him, I was like, I hey. Say, I said, Frank. I <laughs> said to him. <laughs> so, I says to him. <laughs> I say to him, I says, hey, Frankie, I got, I got a little gift for you. And I look over at him and I lean up. I peel up one cheek. You do the cheek. <laughs> I lift the cheek. The classic And I say, lift. this is, are you ready? And he goes, yeah, I'm ready. And I just, I just Let put it. a, I enunciate, I, I put a little pressure. And but I, you thought. I thought it was going to be silent. But it was Why so, so bold. Why do you think so bold? It was going to be think silent. I, I thought I knew the shape of my anus. <laughs> I thought I had, I thought I had uh, a, a, the control of my instrument. 
I thought I seventh grade, please. <laughs> I thought I could just pucker that thing perfectly yeah. or unpucker it because you need it a little loose. You know, you need to sort of fall out. <sighs> anyway, I lean over and it just is a smacking, reverberating. Uh, the friction. It's. I mean, you can hear. You just can envision the Ren and Stimpy close up with Ew, the spittle with coming the cloud. out. Yeah, and it's just like. It was so loud and percussive. Yet. And when you're doing that, if it's coming out like that, then it it's also thought that like, well, this person did that on purpose. Yeah. Like they're intentionally I was proud. making a loud fart oh. in class, which like, what kind of animal is that? Yeah. I kind mean, of beast from hell. It was an alligator tuba ass is yeah. what it was. And so then the teacher. And I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I, was, I, I mean, I went fully red right away. And if it was a cartoon, it would just be like full, either full white or full red. Yeah. The sweat oh, droplets. Yeah. yeah. Time slowed down. Yeah. And it was like once it started making sound, I knew it was going to keep going. So it's like it just immediately goes into slow motion. You just where immediately I'm like, went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, have I been farting for five minutes straight? <laughs> you're looking around the room you're like, oh. What the Just scanning like a lip quivering like oh. <laughs> Ross Ross by the way is doing an impression of the Holbert the Holbert space out the Holbert slack jaw space out no, the oh. Holbert no what is it it's like oh what is that word it's like uh you should go to YouTube and check it out <laughs> 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 That's and, nice. And poor Mrs. Lazaroff, she goes, she I think she demanded that I leave the room. Yeah, she's, she's like, like go You're in the hallway. Fucking disgusting. This, out is, here. this is in a middle school classroom. The one classroom that was carpeted in the whole building. Ew. And it had that industrial Ew. like carpeting. And it just sucks in the fart. Yeah, and I don't know if it was during this incident or if it was another day, but she she stopped class one day to say, Hey, Listen, everybody, <laughs> I have a new policy for this room. The farting has gotten out of control. I know we all, this, our class time is after lunch. I don't know what you guys are eating, but if you have to fart, you must leave the room and do it in the hallway or in the bathroom, but you cannot do it in here. That is and, a and I think she might have even said, You all know who I'm talking about or something <laughs> like that. And and it was just so it was so embarrassing. Like I, like I actually, that's a woman on the edge. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah. she is on the edge. She cannot take it anymore no. from y'all. Yeah. Okay. She had had it with society also. Sounds she, like she shared with us that she wouldn't let her children watch any TV at all because of, of the farting of Ducktales. <laughs> She was like, Ducktales is a uh, it's a disease that this our our culture oh, money? is is so money obsessed. Oh. And this man, so she was like, it celebrates yeah, it celebrates greed and gluttony okay. and capitalism. And she's like, I don't Come need my through. kids seeing that. That is actually spot on. Yeah, and, <laughs> but but you know what's crazy about the brainwashing about how the world works is like, I remember hearing that and thinking she's crazy. Well, like of that's course. crazy. That's crazy. Of that course, they can't watch. We TV dismissed everyone that had cartoon. had deep progressive thinking. I still have guilt about a girl who was a year younger than me, and she was brave enough to write some sort of like feminist diatribe mm. that she printed out and put all over the school. Wow! And. She was a pamphleteer. She was a pamphleteer and she was like calling out things as she saw it. And I remember reading it and being like, this bitch is crazy. Yeah. Like, what is this social pariah she she, trying to fucking do she, here? She can change things. It wasn't even that. It was like. You're like, maybe if she was prettier, she wouldn't be <laughs> using the printer so much. No, I think I did have a feeling of like. I mean, I agree, but like, what the fuck are you doing yeah, let's out Let's not here? make a whole thing about it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over here wearing my fucking J. Crew turtlenecks trying to blend in. Yeah, fit in, bitch. I'm like, I sometimes fire off and I can't help it. I'm doing everything I can to just fucking seal it back in. You're like, be smaller and, and skinnier. printing things out and throwing them around. Like, what are you, nuts? Yeah. But I'm like... 
damn, that was fucking badass. She had her time. She was. Where she is she was now? a total nerd for my mom, too. She loved oh, my mom. Yeah. I don't know where she is now. We should look her and my Mrs. Mom probably knows. Lazaroff up and see if they've changed the world or if they've been beaten down into submission. And now they're like doomsday preppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which... Maybe we're headed there. Who yeah, knows? it's almost time. Who knows? <sighs> um, what else? All right. Well, we talked about relationship status. We Current. talked about our child. Current. Yeah. Got a big fourth birthday to plan for this weekend. <laughs> Which is happening any minute and quite a bit of communication needs to transpire. But it's actually, once it's done, it'll be yeah. good. We are, we are like co-procrastinating over... Our child's birthday? Yeah, like it feels like we both are feeling pressure in the same way. So yeah. we're like procrastinating together. Yeah. Which isn't good. I mean, I think we're both, you know, money is something that mm. comes up for us mm -hmm. all the time as self-employed people that mm -hmm. are trying to make it work. Yeah. And we found ourselves back, back, back again in what a place of discomfort financially yeah. that we don't think we should be in and so then we had to have our little come to jesus talk where we're like we gotta say yes we're we gotta, gonna say, say we gotta put ourselves yes. out there we have to tell the universe we are willing to earn willing to earn so yeah i hit up all all my all old, the contacts all the contacts employers looks like i might be uh doing some a bunch of coaching next month i hope if one of these jobs comes through uh I am going to sacrifice family time. Yeah. You guys are going to go to the beach in Connecticut and I'll be I mean I'll be living with a teenager. We'll see. Possibly. <laughs> we'll see. Uh we'll see. But we are we're going to be we're gonna okay. Go. We're going to be okay. And that is a part of what uh, we do in our marriage is these business meetings. We talk about money, we look at the numbers, we see what's coming in, we see what's going out and we figure and We do it, it out. imperfectly. Yeah. And, but we also both know, thankfully, that neither of us want traditional work, for better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> and what comes with that is an ebb and flow. Yeah. A little bit of a struggle. You a gotta little... be a little more clear about what's happening, and then you get unclear, and you're like, fuck, we better get clear again. It's like bungee jumping. Sometimes you jump off the cliff, and you have the bungee cord, but your face gets real close to yes. the fire. It's yes. not even a stream at the bottom. It's like a fire with spikes coming out of it. But you don't hit it. Nope. We just like to graze it. It's getting hot. I know. It is hot. getting here. hot in here, y'all. Um, um, one thing I want to circle back to seventh grade. Um, I taught a... Uh, yoga class to fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. Yeah, girls I never really got to hear day. about this. Oh, it was all girls? <laughs> yes, thank God. I was at least relieved to see that because I don't teach boys yoga. I teach mm. men yoga. Boys. I like the idea of going on a website and it just says men yoga <laughs> at 12 p.m. We've got a restorative. Hey, different. Restorative yoga in the mornings. We've got dance yoga in the evenings and then 2 p.m. men yoga. Men yoga. Um, so yeah, it was all girls, 18, fifth, sixth, seventh grade girls, all on a field trip from their school and their two teachers. And the moment they walked in, exhausted, everybody, yeah. every it's single like, one of them, <sighs> just ex including the teachers, like everybody looked fucking wrecked. From what? The commute? Just, I think just end of the year, everybody's yeah. like, there's all the pressure wrapping things up. Like the teachers clearly were like. We've yeah. been through it. And, you know, people hear yoga, they're like, oh, we're going to go relax. And I'm like, yeah. a little bit, but also you're going to move and you're going to have to listen to me. And we're going to do some goddess squats. We, we did. <laughs> we did some basics. Um, but like this age group, I typically teach uh, eighth graders mm -hmm. regularly. And they're like pretty mature eighth graders. There's just a couple of them. Having like a big crowd like this is very different. And you could definitely feel the younger ages. And all the mats are laid out for them. And I start talking a little bit about yoga and who has experience and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, any questions? And a little girl raised her hand. I'm like, yeah. She's like, what do you use to clean the mats with? They smell really good. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't know. 
Don't know. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm like, lavender, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to ask the owner. She's downstairs. <laughs> um, and like, there were just like weird little questions like that. It's like, not about yoga at yeah, all. Yeah. You know? I get um, I get that a lot with yeah yeah which like it was fine I don't care like but it was just I was like oh yeah that's what teaching this age is yeah like, they and, don't give a fuck which yeah. is kind of refreshing at the same time that they they're not so in their heads that they're not gonna raise their hand and ask the question yeah yeah so that that's kind of cute um but so much. Looking at their friends, mm. giggling, smiling. And I really, I called my mom and I was like, I was really channeling some Jane Margot oh. commanding the space. Like I was walking around and I was like, now is not the time to make eyes at your friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, actually, we should all close our eyes so we don't worry about what our friends are doing. And we're only worried about what we're doing. Yep. Yep. Close your eyes. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Okay. Close your eyes. Like. Because I'm also like, I'm never going to see these kids again. Who you, gives a fuck? Do you feel like you won them over at any point? Or connected? Yeah, maybe a little. I, it's hard when it's just like a one-off. It was like a field trip. They yeah. all, they're they're coming from a dance class at their school. Okay. Um, So I was kind of, I was like, oh, I was a dancer when I was your age. And, you know, kind of trying to like discuss the differences between dance and yoga how like you're always turning your legs out in Mm. dance but yoga you're really thinking about squaring things up that didn't really land Mm. um (laughs) but like and i've never these kids at shavasana knocked out yeah we're talking full nap like snoring just like i could tell they were dead asleep and i was like oh god they like really needed to rest i my fear is that this generation is up all night scrolling because mm. we are yeah or like we can be if we're not careful yeah uh i'm so scared of that i'm I like know. these children should not well we be... have to take away the phone at certain times probably yeah which she's already asking for one, so. I want to talk yoga for a minute. Okay. What is going on in your yoga life? You've got multiple classes going on yeah. around town. Mm-hmm. You had a big dance yoga class on Saturday. That was a one-off. It's not every Saturday. But yeah. tell me tell me what you're offering at she's your studio. teacher, y'all. Um, well, it might change soon. I think the summer schedule is going to change. But right now, Monday is at 830 and Friday is In the at- morning. Yes, Monday, 8.30 a.m. at Everyone Yoga in Ridgewood. Fridays, 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. at Everyone Yoga in Ridgewood. And then I teach a teen class on Monday nights at 5 p.m. Did Park you tell Slope. those teens to come to that class? Did you want what, the, anybody there? Well, that was a field trip just specifically for that I class. I know, but like, could they, if they wanted to, like come yeah. to the teen class? Oh, from there, from yeah. the group. Yes, I did say, I was like, you know, we have a great kids program mm-hmm. here. ba 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 uh, um, but yeah, I did teach a dance, an ecstatic dance class on Saturday, oh, which I've decided that's really what I'm going to land on calling it now. Ecstatic dance. Which is really like, you know, release through movement. And loud music. Loud music. Like we're talking Imagine Dragons. <laughs> experimental interpretive dance go inward like maybe dancing with your eyes closed or like a lowered gaze yeah. as much as possible um i want to do that and just do high knees the whole time back and forth i'd like, like to see you try like, mm. i'd like to see you try for a full hour do high knees. i will i'm gonna i gotta move i gotta i'm i'm on i'm on this health journey you know what got you me started on this classes. you know what got me started what i met a man in boulder colorado who came to one of the shows I did there. And I talk a lot about the drinking and the addiction and all that stuff on stage. And after the show, this guy stayed and he w- introduced himself to me. He had a 32-year coin on him. Oh, wow. And he, we started talking about recovery. And I do all this material about like sugar addiction and coffee addiction or whatever. And he's like, you know, I, I was like that too. Because I was like, I can't believe you have 32 years. You're so youthful. This guy was like very youthful looking. He had like the build of like a high school wrestler, you know. And he's like, well, he's like, I used to do all the stuff you talked about. And he's like, you know, for so long I was addicted, even in sobriety, I was addicted to anything I thought could change the way I felt uh, about the world or myself. I was using every addiction possible. 
And then I just finally realized like, why am I addicted to all these other things? How come I can't just be addicted to taking care of myself? Mm. And I was like, man, that makes so much sense to me. I would like that too. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. Yeah. But I'm like, actually, I see how it's possible to like, I don't think I'll ever be like a fitness nut or yeah. anything, but like, I would like to seek out with intention in, I don't know if it's an addictive way or whatever, but I would like to seek out things that make me feel good about myself yeah. and like healthy, healthy outlets. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. I love it. That's why I want to do those high knees in your do ecstatic dance knees. class. I mean, I feel like that on some level with yoga, like... I definitely, I wouldn't say it's addictive. I don't know. But I crave. Yeah. Like, it's been a minute. Like, a few. Like, if I don't get to at least one of my own yoga, like, not teaching, but taking one mm. yoga class a week on top of the ones that I'm teaching, I feel not great. Yeah. Like, I know that for me, I need to have at least one to two classes of my own practice where somebody's teaching me and I don't have to think. Um to feel good in my yeah. body but it has been a very interesting experience I, now it's been a year that i've been teaching regularly multiple classes a week and i really love it i feel like i'm good at it and my body is like strong in a very different mm. way yeah. than it ever has been before which is cool yeah it's awesome it's been really cool to watch Thank i you. love I love seeing your stories. You yeah. have some really artful stories you put up about yoga She's and an funny. <laughs> They're funny. And I like your, on Fridays, you do like a music theme class mm -hmm. at night. Very popular. And the most popular class. People are showing up. People showing up. You've got a real following over there. We'll see. We'll see. You're wearing your cult leader garb right now. Which I just tucked the shirt underneath my breast. Because oh. I have so much boob sweat happening right now. Oh, yeah. It's running down. And even though my breasts are small, from breastfeeding, they do a flop. Yeah, over. you got to... You gotta... And so that is sort of where I'm like, I do need a bra sometimes. Because the boob sweat that happens even underneath the small folds... Do you need a bra a or a funnel? <laughs> you could catch some of that sweat. Sell it on eBay or OnlyFans. Well... We do have another money I meeting. <laughs> to get into the easiest possible sex work known to man just sweat Ooh. sweat collection sweat undies whatever but it's like there's still gonna just be work like you're gonna have to promote oh, you're gonna have to like be on fucking socials and shit and you it's gotta just run like, your packages over to that, bedford avenue to the stupid exactly, ups that's store like, it's still just gonna be a fucking nuisance yeah and you can't go to the post office on Wyckoff with your d dirty underwear mail it'll take forever if anybody's got any tips about how to make easy money through like maybe you just no got a face sex work in maria hernandez <laughs> park there's a guy walking around with baklava selling baklava <laughs> i maybe, just saw my dirty undies yeah just do it in person and you could also have bucks have the roll of paper towels next to you oh, i think we have to wrap up because it's getting too hot i know wow can you see it no a little bit it's soaking up thank god i'm not wearing silk yeah because then I was on the subway the other day and I had on a silk dress and let me tell you, I but, looked down and it was just wet, wet lines ooh. underneath my tits. Because silk's not breathing. And I said, well, enjoy this show, y'all. Mm -hmm. Sweaty titties. <laughs> this dress is for titties. sale. I'll be selling this dress at, <gasps> yes! 8th Ave at 8th Avenue. I'll get off the train and sell this thing to the highest bidder. Oh my God. I was watching a Steph to Love clip mm -hmm. who like... Really, I appreciate how she just speaks so frankly about her body. Yeah. And she said she was out for a run and then the shits came on. Oh. And she said she almost shit her pants. And she <laughs> was so graphic that she first had to <laughs> tuck her hemorrhoids in oh. and then oh. squeeze her butt cheeks together. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and she's just telling this to a room full of people yeah, yeah and i'm like you're bless your heart yeah i mean we're doing all, the lord's work talking about bodies okay disgusting meat sacks disgusting absolutely disgusting but it is bravery to talk about talking oh yeah 
Oh. Uh, uh, anyways. Last night at a show, uh, I was emceeing, and this comic ended his set doing a survey of the room, asking everybody who has herpes here, who oh. has herpes, thinking he's being so shocking and provocative. Oh, so it and wasn't cool. No, it was, it was like, I don't know. It wasn't that fun. I can't remember what the payoff was of it. But it, it made me feel really good to be like, hey, I'm, I'm since everybody's so shy, I'm the one here. I, I have it. So th- you know that what? satisfies the statistics. What he should have done was like, if no hands went up, and be like, well, you actually all have it. So yeah. that's yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, ever, no hands are up? I hate to tell you, y'all have it. We're crawling with it. Even if you don't think you do, most likely, you you're it. a carrier. Yeah. <laughs> Either yeah. in your mouth or on your genitals. Yeah. Deal well, with it. Welcome to New York City, you idiot. You fucking idiot. <laughs> so we're doing pretty good. Yeah, everything's great. Everything's great. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody, to a Ross episode of We Hired a Sitter for This. We'll see you next time. Bye.